Hey people, it's Friday, July 10th, 2020. We're out here on the headwaters of the Hasayampa River, a little south of Prescott in the Bradshaw Mountains. One of the first things that I think of when I think of the Mogollon Highlands is microclimates. And this for sure pretty much hits the nail on the head. So right now I'm um, sitting in a mixed conifer forest that's comprised of ponderosa pine, dug fir, white fir, sitting in a little patch of false Solomon seal, snowberries all around. I'm up on a hill looking down at a drainage line with aspen and old growth firs. I collected up here for NHI's herbarium a month or two ago, I guess a few months actually, um, getting all the spring blooms. I wanted to come back up here and see what I see this time of year. So that's why I'm upland, but I was down this drainage a ways a week ago with a friend on a hike and found a really cool plant that I didn't know what it was at the time. I took a piece home and found out that it is um, Hypericum scalari, which may or may not ring a bell, but the common name may, it's St. John's wort. This is something you, it's a homeopathic medicine, herbal supplement that you can buy in stores. So, I'm gonna go collect that, and I'm really excited about it, because I queried Sinet for the Bradshaw Mountains, Sierra Prieta, the Junipers, and really this entire little series of mountain ranges that run north to south here. And no one's ever collected this plant in this area. So this is a pretty cool little piece of data. It's pretty cool that it's up here. All right, so I'm down in that drainage. It's making my way to the St. John's wort. I actually found a, another population, a much larger one, on my way to the individuals I was headed for, which is awesome. I wanted to take a moment and just point out, again, what's so cool about this place. Just a few things right off the bat. You know, we got Aspen right here. Got this white fir. Uh, you probably can't hear them. I don't hear them right now, but hermit thrushes have been singing. So I think this is really awesome. So check it out. It's a little green. You know, there's no running water in here that I've found, but this soil's certainly wetter than the surrounding landscape. And the St. John's wort seems to like it. So here's where I've posted up and here's the plant we're looking for. Hypericum scalari, St. John's wort. It's a yellow flower, opposite leaves. And this species is cradled up here in these higher elevations surrounded by more arid lands that are <clears throat> inhospitable to it and this is where it thrives I alluded to being excited about collecting Hypericum scalari, the St. John's wort, and I wanted to just give you all a little piece as to why it's a good thing, a cool thing, an exciting thing, and um, there's a few reasons, and you know, a couple of the big ones about why I'm excited, why the Institute's excited, is that 
So one is our Milgan Highlands Initiative. We're trying to understand this ecoregion, give definition to it, figure out what it is, and just kind of piggybacking off that sort of like a more ethical piece is just, you know, there's value in knowing what's here and you know, very easily and, you know, this has happened and continues to happen and it's, you know, a huge thing. People call it the extinction crisis, the biodiversity crisis is where we're just losing species left and right and sometimes we know about it. Scientists have been following it, biologists have been following it. And in other cases, it just happens and no one even knew. So we have this small little, you know, you might call it a relic population of Hypericum scalari up here in the Bradshaws. And to my knowledge, no one knows about it. Hey people, so it's been about a week since I collected the St. John's wort up in the Bradshaws. And it's been in the press ever since. Uh, it's dried out now, it's pressed, it's flattened, and it's ready to be mounted on some herbarium paper. So I thought I was gonna do a little time lapse and show you all what that looks like. I'm gonna be making a few just because, like I explained in those other videos, this hasn't been collected before. So that'll be nice to have some duplicates, maybe share with people. And yeah, so here it comes. It's super simple, but just showing you all the whole story of what the collection process looks like. All right, so we got five nice looking specimens here, which is definitely a larger quantity than the NHI's herbarium needs. So if you know of any herbariums out there looking for some Hypericum scalari from the Bradshaws, let us know. What I'm doing here, when I'm mounting, as you saw, it's pretty simple, but I am always trying to represent as many characteristics of the species as possible on each sheet which for some species is harder to do than for others. Uh, however, as you can see, you know, this entire plant from roots to flower fits on a sheet. So it's easy to represent compared to say, you know, a 50 foot tall tree. Um, I enjoy doing this. I think it's a more intimate, uh, it's a unique way to connect with this, with this species and other species that I do this with. Um, and it's sort of artistic, which you don't get a lot of opportunities to feel artistic in science. So yeah, this is about the final product. The last piece is going to be having a label on here that I'm going to get typed up and printed out. It's going to be all the metadata. So that's the date this was collected, who collected it, what associated species this was growing with, its ecosystem, elevation. Uh, latitude, longitude, general locality, etc. Now, once that's on there, I'm gonna get it in the herbarium and get it up on Sinet, and that's that. Bada bing.